food stuffed with other food, customizable treats, toast big enough to feed two people. Disney World's got a ton of new and classic treats you are so not gonna wanna miss out on in 2023. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we're back with a fresh list of the best Disney World snacks that you're gonna wanna try in 2023. We've got new snacks, we've got classic snacks, and we've even got some that we're calling out because, well, they haven't really stepped up to the game lately like we're used to. If you're a big snack connoisseur like we are, or even if you just like having a small snack roll or two during your Disney vacation and wanna know which ones are gonna be most worth your time and money, make sure to download our 2023 snack list today by going to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Best Snacks 2023. It's totally free and we can send you this PDF of a snack list straight to your email so you can access it whenever you want or need it. Ready to get started? We're going to start with the new and unique snacks in Disney World that we want to make sure you know about. And first up, we're headed to Epcot because we've got a snack that has a flavor combo you weren't quite sure about but took the chance anyway and it totally paid off. At Summerfest in the Epcot Germany Pavilion, you can order a bread pudding, but this isn't your average bread pudding. It's made with pretzels and topped with caramel butterscotch and a white cream sauce. The Germany Pavilion is all about their caramel treats and more on that later. And the pretzel bread pudding is no different. If you love sweet and gooey caramel, then you're gonna be happy to know that caramel is the standout flavor for this soft and slightly salty pretzel bread pudding. That white cream sauce deserves some applause too, though it would be great to have just a little bit more of it. Best of all, you can order this dense snack for under under five bucks. And it's super hidden, nobody even knows about it. So definitely surprise your friends with this one. Now I also wanna talk about the festival booths at Epcot. This is a great place to drop your snack budget. Festival of the holidays, we love that Shiwasu holiday kitchen in the Japan pavilion, but there was lots of good stuff going on there. Food and wine festival has way too much to choose from. Last year, the brand new booth was the fry basket with those French fry flights. Flower and garden always has that citrus blossom booth that brings new menu items and Festival of the Arts. We love the Craftsman Courtyard, but again, we do a best of the fest for every single festival. Go ahead and watch those videos. We also publish it on the site if you'd rather read a blog post about it. And of course, we've got those full festival guides. So if you're not quite sure where to start with the festival you're going to, head over to dfbstore.com and pick up one of our festival guides, and that will definitely help you down the right path to have the best possible time and get the best snacks. Next, we're headed to Animal Kingdom. They've got their fair share of adventurous food options, and we're gonna talk about the spiced potato hand pies at Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery. This is one of the many unique options you can choose, and it comes with two fried pastries stuffed with a mix of seasonal vegetables and potatoes, and it's served with harissa aioli and a coriander chutney on the side. The pastry is super nice and crispy, and though we'd love to see these pastries filled with even more potatoes and veggies in the future, they're a great option for plant-based eaters, and you still get a good portion of food for around 10 bucks. Now we're just gonna go down the road next from Animal Kingdom to the Mara at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. This is one of our favorite places to get a quick meal even before these new items were introduced, but now you can get a Chamula spiced shrimp bowl and an oat grilled chicken bowl here too, so we've got even more reason to visit. These are beautiful and they're delicious. Okay, this is one of those items where you're gonna argue with me and say it's technically a meal and not a snack, but these bowls are fairly light with fresh ingredients and make for a nice little lunch to hold you over before your big dinner reservation. And speaking of bowls, this is just something that's happening all over the place in Disney World. It's a big trend. We've got new chicken and waffle bowls at Fairfax Fair on the Sunset Boulevard Strip in Hollywood Studios. Now, these are a game changer for this quick service. This place hasn't ever been, you know, a great location for food. And these are something a little bit different and something a little bit new that I think a lot of people are going to like. There are actually four new waffle bowls. And when we say chicken and waffles, it's that everything's in a waffle bowl. So it's not technically like a soft waffle. Just want to give you a heads up on that. That's probably the major drawback to these. But it's a tomato tomato situation, right? And our favorite here is the chicken based buffalo chicken bowl. This is made with chicken breast nuggets tossed in buffalo sauce topped with coleslaw and served on mashed potatoes inside a waffle bowl. Now the mashed potatoes thing, let's talk about that for a second. That's really the big draw of these <laughs> because they're all mashed potato based and then you've got some sort of a meat or accompaniment on top. But those mashed potatoes are really, really good and that's what's going to kind of sustain you through the rest of the day. So it's a less expensive option you can walk with and it's hearty enough that you're not gonna get hungry again in an hour. And 
And can we take a moment to appreciate all the awesome savory options we've uncovered this year? The Enchanted Rose and Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa has another new savory option for you to try called the Smoked Trout and Crab Dip. Now this is made with a salmon roe, chive oil, and sesame seed lavash. It's a must eat if you're a seafood fan. It's smoky and flavorful. It's a good compliment for whatever cocktail you want to pair along with it. But if you're not a seafood fan, steer clear because the salmon flavor is real strong in this one. Moving on to the sweet stuff. Fortunately, we've got a whole lot of sugary items in this category for you, as well as those savory items before. And you may not have realized these even existed until now. First up, let's talk bubble waffles. There are five character bubble waffles at Marketplace Snacks in Disney Springs. They're all themed after our favorite Fab Five click. But the one we've got to shout out as being our all-time favorite of the bunch is the Goofy Peanut Grand Waffle Sundae, because it does the very most. Goofy Sundae is made with vanilla and chocolate soft serve topped with hot fudge, peanuts, sliced bananas, sliced strawberries, mini M&Ms, and a cherry on top. Now, if you're someone who likes their snacks a little more on the simplistic side, Goofy's bubble waffle concoction might come off as a little too strong. You may be better off with a more subtle option like the Donald's lemon and blueberry waffle sundae or mini sweet strawberry waffle sundae. But if you're looking for jam-packed peanut and banana goodness, just as Elvis intended, then you can order Goofy's Loaded Up Bubble Waffle for the same price as the other four options. It's $8.99. Time to talk about a true classic here. The ice cream martini has been around Epcot's France Pavilion for a while now, but it's been a hot minute since we've given it its moment in the spotlight. Did you know that DFB actually helped name this? It's true, I was in the France Pavilion and they were showing me this new thing they had and I said, oh, it's like an ice cream martini. And they said, oh, that's the perfect name. Lard is in de glace gives you the creative freedom to create the ice cream martini of your dreams. You get to pick two scoops of your preferred ice cream flavor, as well as pick your poison, Grand Marnier, whipped cream vodka, or rum. In the past, we've enjoyed making our martini into a pina colada with two scoops of pina colada ice cream and a shot of rum to make Captain Jack Sparrow proud. My next favorite that I don't talk about on the channel enough is that create your own treat at Disney Springs. This is totally customizable. And if you want to try it, swing by Goofy's Candy Company when you're in the Disney Springs area. Area. You can create a custom treat at this candy shop and you'll need to fill out a card checking out all of your sweet treat preferences. You can choose between treats like a caramel apple or a Mickey Rice Krispie treat, then pick which dipping flavor you want, white chocolate or milk chocolate, and then you can choose your toppings. You'll get one topping included with the price and any additional toppings for a dollar extra. This next spot on the list, I had a tie. So I've got cannolis at Disney's Boardwalk Inn and the turtle brownie at Epcot, mostly because I feel like cannoli people may not necessarily be brownie people. People, so we're gonna talk about both of them. If you wanna try a traditional cannoli with some Disney flair, try the cannoli over at the new Boardwalk Deli in Disney's Boardwalk Inn. You've got that classic vanilla and chocolate chip filling with pieces of lemon and some lemon extract throughout, and bonus cute points, the cannolis come with swirly decorative chocolate Mickey. Now, if you want one of my favorite brownies on property, the turtle brownie at Sunshine Seasons in Epcot is an underrated gem. You cannot tell by looking at it how incredible it is. It's made with a layer of dense chocolatey brownie topped with a huge thick layer of the most dense amazing sweet caramel it really does stand on its own and that's why it's so so rich and good you got chocolate frosting on top of that pecans and chocolate chips now, you know how you order some brownies and they come out dry and disappointing? This is not going to hurt your feelings like that. I love it a lot. So this next one, Disneyland held onto this drink for too long. And I sure I'm glad it decided to share it with Galaxy's Edge and Hollywood Studios too. The cold brew black calf can be found at Katsaka's Kettle. And it's made with Joffrey's cold brew topped with sweet cream cheese. Yes, that's right. And chocolate cereal puffs, basically cocoa puffs. Now, be warned, this drink isn't going to be super sweet until you mix in that sweet cream cheese into the cold brew. Otherwise, you're going to get a mouthful of bitter coffee, which may make a bad first impression on you if that wasn't what you were expecting. But once you get this coffee and cream all swirled together, the balance is just right. And the chocolate puffs on top allow you to snack and sip at the same time. Multitasking. I knew you could do it. And this next one... <sighs> I just can't decide. It's another one where I have to talk about several things. These are the pastries at Wilderness Lodge. They've just really been impressing me lately. The bakery display case at Roaring Fork always has fun and different goodies for you to choose from. They've always had that magic layer bar, which is always, always good, even though it doesn't necessarily look like it's anything outstanding. But they've got a lot of seasonal things going on here too. And some of those stick around for longer. The super cute campfire cupcake, your kids are gonna absolutely adore that and it tastes good too. They've got that 
that giant new bear claw right now. They've got bunt cakes and Melba cupcakes, and there's just a lot going on here that I don't think anybody really thinks about as being one of the great bakery options on property. So if you're staying at Wilderness Lodge or you're nearby, definitely go check out Roaring Fork and see what they've got in their bakery case. Next, we're going to talk about some shareables. If you want to order a heftier snack that's easy to split and can help stretch your dollars, then you're going to want to try one or a few of these. Let's start with the poutine at Disney Springs. Fries, cheese, and gravy. What else is there really, right? Okay, you need to try daily poutine counter service at Disney Springs. This doesn't just have the classic poutine offering either. They've got seasonal poutine varieties too. In the past, we've seen the Latin poutine with fried yucca, black beans, pulled pork and queso fresco, cheeseburger poutine with ground beef, lettuce, tomatoes, onions and house-made pickles, holiday turkey poutine with shredded turkey, gravy, and cranberry relish, and a lot of different ones. But the one option you can guarantee being on the menu, the OG Canadian style poutine with hot, thick cut fries topped with beef poutine, gravy, and cheddar cheese curds. Next up is the Tonga Toast at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. We don't talk about this nearly as much as we should. It is so good that the resort decided to offer it on two of their restaurant breakfast menus. Tonga Toast is made of battered and deep fried banana stuffed sourdough bread, with cinnamon sugar on top, and you can find Tonga Toast at Captain Cook's and Kona Cafe. But if you want to find the least expensive version of this specialty breakfast offering, choose Captain Cook's. While Kona's version does come topped with a strawberry compote that the Captain Cook's version does not have, that extra strawberry sauce is going to rack up the price of this toast to $17. Captain Cook's, however, is the very same thing minus the strawberry sauce for under $11, and the portion size can still be easily split between two to three people. So tachos are a mighty popular popular favorite snack for many folks on the DFB team. Literally, go to Hollywood Studios with any one of them and you'll probably have to swing by Woody's lunchbox sometime during your visit. These tots, or potato barrels as Disney likes to call them, come topped with beef and bean chili, shredded cheese, queso, tomatoes, corn chips, green onions, and sour cream. You're gonna get a lot of tater tot goodness for around 10 bucks, but heads up, these are baked and not fried. They still taste salty, crunchy, and satisfying, but hey, they're a little bit healthier. But if you're a tot purist, just know these will taste more like the tots you'd cook up in your oven at home. And I know we're talking about snacks here, but my goodness, if I'm not careful, I could go on and on about my love for Three Bridges Bar and Grill in Disney's Coronado Springs. It's classy, the prices aren't terrible, the atmosphere is super chill, and you don't have to stress over advanced dining reservations for this one. Just walk up to the host stand and put your name on the wait list. And once you get a table here, do yourself a favor and order these two options for sure. First, the warm manchango and Oaxaca cheese dip with the chorizo, roasted red peppers, and tortilla chips. It's not your average chips and cheese. It's an elevated version that you can share with the table, though you may not want to after the first couple of bites. And then if you're of age, you'll want to get your own sangria flight. This is going to hook you up with decent samples of all four house-made sangrias, including the rosé sangria, the red sangria, the sparkling sangria with peach liqueur and lemon, and the white sangria with elderflower and passion fruit flavoring. You can get this entire flight for 22 bucks and it is easily shareable. All right, back to the customizable options again. The Main Street Confectionery has so many desserts for you to choose from, but if you're looking for an option you can easily split with other people in your group, the customizable candy popcorn over in the Colonel Kitchen is the route to choose. Here, you and your Main Street posse are going to choose what flavor popcorn will be your base, then from there you'll add a syrup drizzle and whatever candied toppings your heart desires. You can get two toppings on your popcorn for $12.99 and any extra toppings for an additional $1 each. And dude, if you haven't bitten into a Disney beignet, you haven't lived. Please don't at me, New Orleans folks. I know you guys have the superior options, but still, I will take a Mickey beignet any day of the week. A variety of beignets can be found at Scat Cats Club and Cafe in Disney's Port Orleans French Quarter. Now, just to make it clear, there are two parts of Scat Cats. There's the evening lounge, Scat Cats Club, and then there's the all-day snack service, Scat Cats Cafe. At the cafe, you order beignet options like the standard fluffy and sweet Mickey-shaped beignets, which will give you three to six pastries and your choice of dipping sauce, either salted caramel, strawberry, or chicory chocolate ganache. The Baton Rouge beignets, which are piped with your choice of liqueur, Bailey's Irish Cream, Kahlua, or Rum Chata, and the Mickey-shaped beignet sundae, served with your choice of ice cream and sauce, and also topped with whipped cream. At the lounge, you've got those savory beignet options like the Scat Cats beignets, which are standard Mickey beignets served with red pepper jelly, pimento cheese, and green goddess dressing, and the oyster beignet po'boy made out of a Mickey beignet and filled with fried oysters, lettuce, tomato, Cajun remoulade, and house-made pickles. And don't forget, you can usually find seasonal beignets around Scat Cats too. In the past, we've seen options like pumpkin spice for Halloween, peppermint for Christmas, and cinnamon whiskey-filled beignets for Valentine's Day. 
Are you ready for the classics? We can't leave out those classic DFB favorites that have stood the test of time. They deserve their due shout out too. And a lot of these we haven't talked about in a while. So first up, any treat honoring our good pal Chewbacca is a treat we can get behind, which is why the Wookiee cookie at Backlot Express has been a long time favorite of ours. This goodie is made with two oatmeal cookies, really, really soft and chewy oatmeal cookies, get it? Sandwiched together with a fluffy whoopie pie cream filling and topped with a chocolate bar designed to look like Chewbacca's bandolier. True to Chewy's name, the Wookiee cookie is chewy, soft, and fluffy time and time again. It's basically like a giant OCP or oatmeal cream pie, and it's wonderful. Next, I loved them when they first came to Pandora, World of Avatar, and I love them now. And here's to hoping I love them forever and always. The cheeseburger pods at Satuli Canteen are a savory sort of snack that hits the spot every time. These cheeseburger pods are stuffed with ground beef, ketchup, mustard, pickle, and cheddar cheese, but don't let the cheese and cheeseburger fool you. You're not going to get a whole lot of cheesiness out of these little bao buns, but you'll still get a lot of that juicy, meaty flavor that kids and adults alike can enjoy. Speaking of kids, if you order the cheeseburger pods off the kids menu instead of the regular menu, you'll get one pod instead of two for a cheaper price, and that's why it's in our snack list. But the kids menu offering also comes with chips, fruit, and a small soft drink. Not a bad trade-off. All right, next, we're heading over to Disney Springs. Once upon a time, the only place you could find a fresh Gideon's Bakehouse cookie in Disney World was at the Polite Pig. But at the end of 2020, Gideon's Bakehouse opened its very own storefront in Disney Springs and has been one of, if not the, most popular sweet treat location on property ever since. Gideon's Bakehouse's original storefront is located on Orlando's East End Market, but since its opening in 2016, this cookie spot started being listed as the best cookies in Orlando, Florida, in the United States, and planet Earth from publications ranging from the New York Times to the Boston Globe to Sports Illustrated and more. But what kind of cookies are you going to find here? It all depends on when you visit. Gideon's is known for their standard options and their rotating monthly options too. What I can guarantee is that you'll have a variety of fully loaded, nearly half pound cookies to choose from with cookie selections like the pistachio toffee chocolate chip, cookies and cream, peanut butter crunch, and the ever popular original chocolate chip cookie. You can also find other sweets here too and specialty items as well. So pay attention to their Instagram account and our newsletter and we'll let you know what's coming up next. So forget the bacon and eggs. If you want a sugary breakfast option for the books, you need to pick up a warm cinnamon roll from Gaston's Tavern in Fantasyland. This roll is fluffy, the cinnamon lining is a knockout, and the icing is thick and plentiful. And you should always ask for an extra cup of icing, because you can. Not to mention, Gaston's Tavern usually isn't too terribly busy in the mornings, so you should be able to pick up a cinnamon roll pretty quickly in between hitting up your first couple rides of the day. And a best snacks list wouldn't be a best snacks list without our good friend, the Dole Whip, who comes in many shapes and sizes and flavors across Disney World property. You've got your traditional pineapple Dole Whips, you've got your limited edition flavors, ranging from watermelon to key lime to chocolate covered strawberry and beyond. And you've got those rather elusive options like the citrus swirl at Sunshine Tree Terrace in Magic Kingdom's Adventureland, which isn't really a Dole Whip, but is actually frozen orange juice swirled with vanilla soft serve, which we always like to group with Dole Whips because it seems like it fits quite nicely in that family. Unfortunately, the citrus swirl can be unpredictable, so you can't really guarantee it'll be available when you visit. Check mobile order before you head over there. But there are still plenty of Dole Whip offerings you can choose from in Adventureland between both both Sunshine Tree Terrace and Aloha Isle. Sunshine Tree Terrace options include things like I Lava You Float with Fanta Strawberry Soda and Passion Fruit Flavor, served with Dole Whip Orange and topped with Popping Candy. And while Aloha Isle options include things like the Raspberry Swirl Float made of Raspberry Pineapple Swirl Dole Whip and served with Pineapple Juice, you can also head to Pineapple Lanai, a Polynesian Village Resort, and Swirls on the Water over there in Disney Springs. There's a lot more Dole Whip here than there was 10 years ago, and we're happy about it. Next on our list is, I don't know, no, just really us being indulgent, I guess. If you ever hear me stop talking about plastic cheese, I've probably been abducted by aliens because I love this fake cheesy goodness. A cup of cheese sauce is available at several different kiosks and quick services around Disney World to make whatever you're eating a thousand times better. And oftentimes it'll either come included with a certain item or it'll cost you a dollar extra. You can find them alongside Mickey soft pretzels at various park snack kiosks, baskets of fries like the ones at Backlot Express, corn dog nuggets over at Casey's Corner and Magic Kingdom, with your potato barrel tots at Woody's Lunchbox in Hollywood Studios and several other locations too. So if you share my plastic cheese obsession, then you'll be happy to know you can take your obsession one step further and sport your very own plastic cheese t-shirt. Yeah, that's definitely not going to show up on the Disney gift shop shelves. So the only way you can get one of these tees is by going to the DFB store website. Go to merch.dfbstore.com. You can also find Dole Whip shirts here too in a variety of different styles. So if you're planning on heading to Disney World in 2023 and want to 
rep your favorite or soon to be favorite Disney snacks, check out merch.dfbstore.com and get you one of these fine looking outfits to show off your Disney snack pride. All right, time for my favorite part of the video. No, really, this is a list of my favorite treats, all recommended by the palate of yours truly. We're gonna start with that Wendell's Bear Claw and the candied bacon in Magic Kingdom. So whenever you're in Frontierland next time, do me a favor, stop overlooking Westward Ho refreshments. If it's open, go there, go immediately. And while you're there, order a Wendell's Bear Claw. This is a traditional bear claw pastry dipped in chocolate sauce and sprinkled with hazelnut. And inside is more hazelnut. It's basically like the best pan au chocolat ever. Please excuse my French um, pronunciation. <laughs> and it's one of my all-time favorites. It's flaky, it's chocolate filled, it goes great with a nice piping cup of hot coffee or tea, which you can also get from Westward Ho. And if you want something a little less traditional, try the candied bacon skewer. Now, if you're someone who prefers their bacon thin and crispy, this is not that kind of bacon. It's like my mom. Whenever she orders bacon, she says to burn it. That's not what this is. This is gonna be a thick, kind of fatty cut on a stick coated with brown sugar. And I know that's probably the least appetizing way to describe this, but seriously, the flavor of the bacon and the texture of the bacon is great. That brown sugar coating isn't overpoweringly sweet. It's delicious. Next is that caramel butter bar at Epcot. This is at Caramel Kusha in the Germany Pavilion, and it has people split. Some people aren't a huge fan because of that super buttery and crumbly, and I'm gonna be honest, kind of greasy texture, but I'm not some people. I am probably the Caramel Butter Bar's number one fan, and I just keep coming back to order it each time I'm in Epcot just to see if I'll change my mind someday. So far, I'm not budging. I love this thing. By the way, I also really, really like the salted caramel cupcake over there at Caramel Couche too. It is the flavor of the Caramel Butter Bar that keeps winning me over though. Shortbread, rich caramel, butter, all of those are good things. <laughs> And even if someone in your group doesn't wanna take a chance on the Caramel Butter Bar, there are lots of other dessert options in the bakery case you can choose from instead. Now, kinda wild that I've only got one mac and cheese option listed on this AJ's Favorites list, right? But I think the mac and cheese at Gasparilla Island Grill is so good, it deserves to be the star of the mac and cheese show right now. The house-made mac and cheese at this fast food location is labeled on the menu as a chef's specialty, and they are not kidding around. It is delicious. It's elbow macaroni covered in cheese that's thick and creamy, and dreamy. You know there's just a ton of heavy cream in there and you can grab a cup of this golden goodness for under $10 and get a side of it for even less. That's usually what I do. Now let's talk Chicken Guy at Disney Springs. Once again, you can argue that Chicken Guy is a quick service restaurant with meals, not snacks, but I'll come right back at you with everything can be a snack if you truly believe. The Chicken Guy menu puts the spotlight on fresh, all natural chicken tenders paired with a variety of sauces, 22 to be exact, and I am definitely a sauce person. The tenders are hand pounded to maximize the crunch and brined in lemon juice, pickle brine, and buttermilk, then infused with herbs. If you're truly looking for something snack-sized and not a full-on meal, you can order three tenders, plus your choice of any two dipping sauces for around six bucks. Or you can order two tenders off the kid's menu, plus your choice of any signature sauce, and that's served with fries, a fruit cup, or applesauce for around five dollars. Very, very affordable. Now also, let's stay in Disney Springs because I don't know why more people are not talking about this amazing, amazing dish. This is the vintage bacon and cheese dip at Cooks of Dublin in Disney Springs. This needs to be talked about more. I've been talking about it for years. It is unbelievable. This is made with strong, melty cheese and chunks of bacon bits. And if you're someone who likes your cheese with a bit of that aged, sharp flavor, then you're gonna wanna order this on the side with your onion rings or your fish and chips or your just your chips. But if the strong cheese isn't your favorite, you may wanna stick with the melty plastic stuff, which is also rather tasty as we established earlier, but you're not gonna find it at Cooks. And yes, this is the second bread pudding on our list. Thanks for noticing. We're going to talk about the Ohana bread pudding. Of course, this has been a staple DFB favorite for a while now and a longtime favorite dessert for me personally. The Ohana bread pudding is made a la mode with warm caramel sauce drizzled on top. And though usually we can't expect this dessert at the end of our Ohana dinner meal, it's also a secret menu item over at the neighboring Tambu Lounge. Just ask your server if the Ohana bread pudding is available during your next visit to see if you can order this sweet treat a la carte. And the seasonal soups at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I know that Disney World is pretty scorching the majority of the time, but when it's not and you order one of those fabulous seasonal soups from Nomad Lounge, it doesn't get cozier than that. Nomad has these really amazingly unique soups that I could never tire of. One of the best seasonal options of the bunch is the sweet corn soup made with butter poached lobster, cilantro crema, charred corn, pickled jalapeno, cotija cheese, and tahine. I always ask for no cilantro crema though, because I'm not a cilantro fan. And when we first ordered this soup, it was confusing because it came out in this big bowl 
bowl with just the dry ingredients and then they actually assembled it there at the table, so pretty fancy. And it is absolutely incredible. Now, we're coming to the end of the list, but if you're a longtime DFB viewer, you might be going, hold up, there are some items you've talked about endlessly in the past, and they didn't show up on the list this time around. So what gives? Well, things change in Disney World. Some things get better, some things get worse. So it's time to spill the beans. There are items I purposefully left out, and you deserve to know why. Now, for years, I've raved about the peanut butter pie at the Contempo Cafe fast food location in Contemporary Resort, and I wanted to like it in its 50th anniversary form. I really did, but it's just not as appealing. There's way less peanut butter to this peanut butter pie than there used to be, and that's super disappointing. I mean, the mound of peanut butter, like it was basically peanut butter cookie dough, was the best part. I gave this new version multiple chances, but for now, it's kind of a dud in my book. That being said, there is a new banana sauce layered with the peanut butter that may be something you enjoy, more than just straight up peanut butter cookie dough cream cheese stuff. But that's not the end of the story yet. Recently, we stumbled across something very interesting. Though we're only seeing the 50th anniversary version of the peanut butter pie in the Contempo's bakery case right now, we did see the OG peanut butter pie pop back up on the menu online, and it's listed underneath the 50th anniversary version. Does that mean we'll see the miraculous return of one of my favorite treats in the near future? Hopefully. We'll make sure to let you know just as soon as we can order it again, if that becomes an option in the future. Fingers crossed. Let's talk Territory Lounge. Now, please don't hate me. I still love Territory Lounge and its comfy, cozy atmosphere, but the update menu here just isn't as good as the previous one. You've got unique options like the Territory Popcorn Sampler, the Bacon on the Wire, and the Bone and Brie, but I sure do miss the Oregon Chardonnay Fondue, the Seasonal Cobblers, the Ribs. If you're looking for a peaceful spot to rest from the parks and enjoy a drink, this is still a must-visit spot. But as far as the food's concerned, you may be better off grabbing a speedy meal from a different Wilderness Lodge quick service like Roaring Fork or Geyser Point, because this one just isn't really doing it for me right now. Just saying. And we're going to talk about the carrot cake cookie at Hollywood Studios. Now this is blasphemous and I understand that, but it's true. We've had a fickle history with the carrot cake cookie from Trolley Car Cafe and right now things are not good. The last time I ordered a carrot cake cookie, the frosting was kind of gummy and gelatinous and not at all appealing. So I'm withholding recommending it any further until I can try it again. I might have just hit this one on an off day, which is why I'm not willing to give up on it completely just yet. But for now we're sticking with the Wookiee cookie as my ride or die. Maybe I just needed to let the carrot cake cookie warm up a little bit. It was definitely cold from the refrigerated cabinet at the Starbucks, so maybe it just needed to warm up, but it was just really gummy and not good. Now, if you're over at Caramel Kusha, you might be able to order the gingerbread salted caramel buttercream cookie sandwich to help fill that cookie sandwich void even further. That thing's amazing. That option's usually a Christmas seasonal offering, but it's been on the regular menu year round this year, so who knows? Maybe you'll still be able to enjoy it when you're there. All right, 32 snacks may sound like a whole lot of snacks, but this list is definitely just the tip of the Disney World snack iceberg. If you want to check out hundreds more potential treats and eats around the parks, then look no further than our park snack guides over at dfbstore.com. Make sure to type in YouTube for extra savings on your overall purchase. Thanks for joining us for another successful snack list. Let me know in the comments which snack you think deserves an honorable mention on this list and which one maybe has fallen off of your best snacks list yourself, because this definitely is isn't the last snack video you'll be seeing from us this year. This is just the beginning. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.